All right, well, let's get started. Um, thanks for validating you can see the screen um, and thanks for joining us today. I am Allison Manley. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Canopy Studios. And today's webinar is about creating a search and social media meta tag strategy. Uh, as many of you know, Canopy designs, builds and supports websites for clients who wanna make a positive impact. And Jim Birch is our Drupal engineering manager who not only helps to lead our team of Drupal developers, but also helps Canopy clients turn business needs into manageable business, solu digital solutions, I should say, and turning Canopy's great designs into a reality. He also has his own Lego, which is displayed here, which is affectionately called Lego Uncle Jim. Uh, a quick reminder, of course, that there is a Q&A at the end of this. And yes, Joseph, to answer your question, this will be recorded. Uh, <laughs> if you need to bail, we get it. We understand everyone's multitasking these days. Um, but there is a Q&A at the bottom, which uh, please use that. If you do have any questions throughout the presentation, you can ask them early and I'll save them all until the end. So from here, I'm going to turn it over to Uncle Lego, Lego Uncle Jim. Bye. <laughs> Thank you much. Yes, the, my Lego character was given to me uh, by my nine-year-old uh, nephew for Christmas. Uh, this was many, many moons ago. He's almost an adult now, so he probably thinks it's less cool than, than I do. Um, I just posted the links uh, to the slide deck into the chat window here. Um, there's a lot of uh, links to resources and uh, validators that I'm going to talk about today, uh, so feel free to follow along. Uh, and then, you know, Allison will be sure to send the slide deck and the, the video out uh, later. So let's get started. Uh, we're just about halfway through our winter webinar series. We're covering six topics over six uh, Thursdays this winter. Um, coming up in January of two great ones, inclusive content strategy and reorganizing your navigation for success. Uh, both really cool topics. I am the engineering manager, or one of the engineering managers here at Canopy. Uh, I am the primarily work in Drupal. Uh, I'm the maintainer of a few modules, uh, Bootstrap Paragraphs, SEO Starter. Uh, I'm an Acquia certified developer, a former organizer of Drupal Chicago and Midcamp before I moved to the East Coast. Uh, and I hang out in the Drupal SEO channel on the Drupal Slack. Uh, so I try to help people and answer questions there and learn from others. Uh, feel free to reach out. I'm at the Jim Birch everywhere on the internet, uh, Jim and Canopy, and that wonderful little uh, UPC symbol is where to find me on LinkedIn. Okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, search and social uh, metadata. Uh, we're going to go through targeting uh, with that metadata, uh, content modeling, you know, so getting the metadata about your content, uh, how to test, and then uh, we'll go into questions and answers. Um, and this is a topic I've been speaking on for years. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it as brief as possible today, but I have a bunch of other presentations out there, uh, you know, that are 45 minutes, hour long, uh, where we go into a real depth. Um, <clears throat> but most of this presentation is about the content that is about your content. Uh, so. Uh, Meta comes from the Greek, which is a preface for about the thing. Um, yeah, this picture is one of my favorites. It's a card in a card catalog that's describing a book that describes the card catalog itself. Uh, so it's pretty meta, meta, meta. Um, the metadata that we're going to talk about today is usually titles, descriptions, images, and then other really specific data about your content. It doesn't have to appear on your web page. Uh, it's an opportunity to describe or market the page or the URL to new users. Um, and you can have different metadata for Google, Twitter, and then Facebook slash every other social media platform out there. Uh, Social media is all about the meta tags. Uh, we'll just talk about Twitter first. They developed their own Twitter card meta tags. Uh, there are only four different types, a uh, summary card, a summary card with large image, which is on the right at the top, uh, 
an app card if you have an app or a game, and then a player card if you have a video or an audio source. Um, defining these meta tags inside of your page uh, will make your content appear rich on Twitter feeds and Twitter apps. Uh, Facebook and mostly everybody else in the social media sphere uses an open source meta language called OpenGraph. Uh, similar to meta tags, uh, except a lot more robust, uh, you can define these tags and uh, your content will appear as rich content in Facebook, on LinkedIn, in Pinterest, and other sites that render it. Uh, the bottom right there, the New York Times article is uh, what an article looks like shared on Facebook. In addition, uh, there's Slack. Uh, Slack will use Twitter or Facebook, any of these rich meta tags that it finds, uh, and it's gonna pull the first one it finds from your source because they're all about productivity at Slack. Um, so you can use Twitter or Facebook for that, and whichever one appears first in your source code is what Slack will use to unfurl your URL. Uh, and then there's uh, ver verification meta tags. Uh, these are defining or connecting your properties on social media uh, to your website. So if you have a Facebook page, you can uh, verify that this site is you know, an extension of your Facebook page. Uh, if you have a Pinterest page, same thing. Uh, so these are all just static meta tags that you can put in your content once, usually on the home page, uh, to prove to the social media sites that your site is connected to them. What we do in our CMSs, this is true for Drupal, you can also do it in WordPress and, and anything else, any other CMS that has custom fields, is we can make as many fields as we want for these meta tags uh, and then use a token or a slug and fill in the meta tag with this dynamic information. So every page we know in our CMS has a title. This is good for the title meta tag. You can use it for your Facebook title and your Twitter title, but you can also have a second field that you know, we can apply just to Facebook um, or just to Twitter. Uh, same with the description, uh, same with the image and any other you know, schema or metadata we want to add. Uh, and these, again, these additional fields don't have to be displayed in what, you know, when you go to the page, it can just be hidden from that and used only for the meta tag. Uh, so in turn, you could have different titles, descriptions, images for each of your social media platforms, or at least Twitter, and then everybody else, and then Google. Um, you know, so on Twitter, I could include at the Jim Birch in every post that gets shared on Twitter. You know, here's the title, here's the description and the image. And by the way, don't forget to follow at the Jim Birch. You know, for Facebook, you could have, you won't believe what happens next after dot, 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 and you know, come up with your own you know, crazy messages for Facebook users. For Google, Google is all about schemas. Uh, Schema.org vocabularies is a type of metadata uh, that allows for nested values. So while uh, meta tags are a one-to-one -one value, uh, so you know, you're gonna say the open graph title is this, the uh, op open graph description is this. In schemas, you can have, you know, this page is about an organization and then nested inside of that organization is this is the organization's address, and this is the organization's category, and this is the organization's open hours. Uh, so it allows for that nested structure of metadata. Uh, there are schemas that every site can define. And then there are content type specifics. So you know, the, every site could define is gonna be that it's a website, that this is a page, uh, that we have a site search, uh, whereas content type specific schemas are articles or books, videos, uh, more entities. And that's where content management systems really shine. If we have different content types or post types for these different things, uh, we can pull that data and define it in these schemas. 
all about schemas, but a good page title, H1 and meta description also go a long way in uh, search engine optimization for Google. So when we talk about schemas, uh, we're talking about these rich features that appear in Google, uh, recipes, business listings, what time is it, you know, the knowledge box that's on the right side, um, more links, videos, top stories, the list goes on and on and on. So Google parses, you know, their index of the web along with this rich data that it collects and puts together these, you know, no more than 10 blue links on the search results anymore. You know, they want to show or keep users on the page, you know, and target this type of information to them. So to do that, we need uh, to model our content, much like we do when we're building a website and we're going to say, this piece of content is an event, uh, this piece of content is an article. Uh, we want to use uh, Google's uh, search gallery where they actually define what they're looking for in metadata to uh, get you into those results. Uh, so the list is long, events, facts, job listings, uh, go to that in a minute, uh, but it's linked right here. Um, and then once you drill into it, like this is a simple example for an article. These four things, a headline, the date published and the date modified and an image. These are the requirements for an article to appear in that article carousel on Google. Uh, there are a bunch of other non-required fields that you can continue to fill out, uh, but basically once you add this schema to your web page, it no longer becomes a web page in Google's eyes. It becomes an article, you know, much like a, a, a book schema would become a book, no longer just a random web page filled with div HTML markup. Here's the Google search gallery for event. Uh, they are, it's a lot more uh, in depth uh, you know, they are looking for location, name, and start date. Uh, those are the required fields. And then you can really drill down into specifics. You can have links for payments. Um, this year, 2020, they added virtual and uh, no location events because uh, that wasn't part of the schema until this year, funny enough. Um, so, you know, what we do when we're looking at setting up a content type for events and we want to target having our event in the right sidebar, uh, you know, when you search for, you know, webinars about SEO, um, you know, you could go in and plug in all this information and, you know, Google will come and crawl and hopefully display our information there. For the schemas that every site should have, we want to talk about out breadcrumbs. Uh, this gives Google a, a path to crawl uh, through your site. Uh, so you can tell them that this little block of HTML is the breadcrumbs. Uh, organization. So uh, most days, you know, there's no fun websites anymore. Most sites are going to have organization. They're going to have a corporate contact, a logo, and then uh, social profiles. So these are what appear in the knowledge box that also appears on the right hand side when you search for your organization. And then you can define your homepage as a website, uh, which, you know, not every URL on the internet is a website anymore. So you actually can specify this as a website. And when you do that, you can define your uh, site links search box. So if you've ever gone to Google and search for a company and you see their search box in the search results, uh, that's one way to get it in there. Uh, Google can also assume these things and stick it in there on their own. Okay. And then there are uh, content type specifics, uh, specific schemas. Uh, so this is a big list and it's always growing. Uh, there's the articles, books. Uh, this year also brought us COVID-19 announcements. Uh, so for organizations that are publishing uh, 
information about COVID-19, uh, hospitals, universities, uh, state government organizations, uh, Google can actually print those things in search results. Um, so you can get the information in front of users right away. They don't have to go to your website and uh, you know, have to click around for it. Um, popular ones we've done a lot is events, uh, frequently asked questions and how to's, uh, image licensing, uh, job postings is a great one also, if you wanna have your job listings appear in the right hand side or in the search box, movies, podcasts, products. Um, there are uh, reviews and review snippets that fit inside of other elements like uh, recipes and organizations. Uh, and then there's a subscription and paywalled content. So, you know, instead of black uh, listing content inside of your page, you know, if you are the Wall Street Journal and, and want to, you know, hide specific content from search, uh, you don't really need to do that. You can do it with uh, subscription and paywalled content schemas that says, please don't share this information. It is for people that pay us. Uh, so these are the content models that we really dig into when we're doing our content types and to see which uh, we can, uh, which things we can target. What comes after that? Google is releasing a uh, new uh, schema or rich features all the time. Uh, schema.org vocabularies are an open source project in and of themselves. Uh, they manage their uh, uh, work on GitHub. So you can actually see pull requests and people working on what should be in each schema. And you can actually go in there and see employees from Google talking about, you know, what they need and what they want next. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I've been monitoring for a lot of my clients is the medical web page. There are hundreds of medical schemas. Uh, so you can have conditions and diagnoses and, and surgeries. And these are all defined based on other uh, coding systems like the SNOMED uh, coding system in this example. Uh, so Google doesn't say they track it now, but you know certain organizations like uh, Mayo Clinic are already having these kind of schemas in their web pages. One thing when we do set up these things, you need to test. Uh, so I always include the list of validation and debugging tools uh, for meta tags. Uh, the W3C has uh, developer tools, which you can go and crawl your whole HTML and uh, make sure your meta tags are valid. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn all have inspectors or debuggers where you can share the URL and make sure your cards look as you expect. Um, sometimes they get cached. A little tip here is you can put a question mark and then gobbledygook text at the end uh, to make them fetch a new version of the URL. Uh, and then for schema.org, uh, Google has a rich results test uh, that tests against what they are looking for at this moment. Uh, Bing has a markup validator. Uh, Yandex uh, for our Eastern European friends has a, a data linter. Uh, and then I put an example to just a, a generic data linter in there also. Uh, so, uh, you want to make sure your markup is valid or the effort you put into this is for not because Google won't be able to parse or Facebook won't be able to parse the information correctly. Okay, uh, so uh, finally here, we want to make a plan and implement. Uh, so, you know, for social media, you want to talk with your organization about what social media sites are important. You know, you don't want to spend all this time setting up, you know, for Twitter if you don't need to. You know, if you don't want to target three of them separately, you don't want, you don't need to set up three different meta tags. Um, so, you know, talking with, you know, where you want to place your importance is the first step. Um, second step is to gather your uh, organization and maybe your author's properties in these sites. So for Twitter, for example, you can define your site's Twitter URL, but you can also define like your author's URL. So, uh, you know, we can, when we publish a post, we can say this is on canopy.com, but it's also by the Jim Birch. Uh, and then <clears throat> finally, what data do you want content editors to create or personalize in your CMS for the social media sites? 
So do you want a generic image to appear or do you want an image on every uh, page? Do you want the image to be different from what is on a page? Do you want to customize the image, put a watermark? Uh, you know, do we want to do title and description? Do you want to have a different title for Facebook? You know, those kind of things. Uh, so for search, uh, defining what site-wide schemas are appropriate for your organization, uh, what content specific, uh, rich features do you want to target based on your site content? And then again, you know, what do you want to have the editors be able to personalize on a content piece of content by piece of content uh, basis? Um, so, you know, we can make it as dialed in as, as we want to, or we can make it as generic as we want to when we do those things. So, you know, something like events, you know, there's a lot of fields in there where you just pull it from the event information. You don't want to personalize it. It's just start time is start time, end time is end time. You don't need a different field for that, you know, but the description, you know, you might want to have a smaller description on social media or search, you know, to be able to grab users to come to your site. And with that, I will open it up to any questions. Thanks, Jim. I have a question. Um, okay. For social when it comes to social media, what if you do if you don't have images? So we can define uh, an image that is a generic image. Um, you know, it's not going to be as uh, attention grabbing when your content is shared, but it's perfectly understandable to come up with an image for every piece of content is, you know, hard work. Uh, so uh, what I like to do in 2020 is come up with a fallback uh, solution. So I have a, you know, field that's the social media image on a site, then maybe I'll fall back to the header image that's on a page. And then maybe from there, I'll fall back to a generic site logo, you know, or, you know, broad image there. So if the admin does fill out the, uh, you know, any one of those, it would take the first one that it chooses. Okay. Anyone else have any other questions? Because I do have another one, <laughs> but I want other people to go first. All right, I'll ask mine. Um, so getting rich features in Google could potentially stop a visitor from visiting the website. So what do you do in that case? So you need to quantify getting a visitor to your website, is that the goal or is getting the information in front of your users, the value prop? You know, so right now I could go and get a bunch of pizza dough recipes from King Arthur Flower without ever visiting the website. I can find that all in Google search and other aggregated source. You know, they don't need me to visit their website. It's not an ad based website, but they do need me to get their flower. So I get the brand recognition of them. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there are other ways to quantify too. Like, you know, if you get your events in the listing and you get your click from event, you need the event in Google, right to Eventbrite, you know, and you get a, a booking at your events, you know, then you can quantify your success that way also. So it is a little of, you know, uh, a balance game of, you know, getting people to your website or getting the information to the users. Right, fair. All right, and we do have a question. Um, any tips with event schema location that Google requires? Often locations of events that we host is not an address, which Google seems to really like. So we default to a primary address. It would be awesome to say in the garden by the arbor. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, I saw this year they added uh, virtual events here, let me see if I can stop sharing and go down to, they've made things a little bit more lenient this year. So it might not be as strict as it was before. Uh, I'll throw this plug in here. Yes, in March, I'm gonna throw this in the chat here. In March, Google added properties for virtual, postponed, and canceled events. Um, so you can 
maybe use virtual location and then do it in the arbor by the by the garden is that what it, what it was yeah he was asking um if it's if it's in a location that doesn't have an address somewhere on campus where it's you know by the gazebo or you know um for that you might want to look into latitude and longitude mm. and include the in the garden by the arbor in the description it's a good one uh, i will probably want to play around with that now <laughs> <laughs> We've stumped Jim. <laughs> All right, any other questions? All right, well, uh, I will be sending out an email tomorrow uh, with a follow-up. Uh, Jim, if you wanna just share your screens, uh, or your screen again, um, because he did include in the back of those slides quite a lengthy list of uh, resources. So um, we'll make sure to send that off to everybody. And thank you all for having uh, for coming and have a wonderful rest of your week and happy holidays. If this is the end of your, your work week, uh, have a wonderful holiday vacation. Bye everyone. <laughs>